everyone and welcome back to my channel you know guys lately we've made really a lot of famous dolls on my channel like all kinds of celebrities i've made an aria stark i've made jennifer lopez i've made lady gaga i've made marlon dietrich a week ago there were more probably. I ah, yeah, Queen Elizabeth, Marie Antoinette doll. Really, almost all my dolls lately were some sort of famous people, celebrities, historical characters and so far. And you know what? I think I'm kind of tired of it. Well, it's quite normal because making these celebrity dolls, famous dolls, it's quite a long job. It's me sitting here with the reference pictures for many, many, many hours for a couple of days with the reference picture on my phone and with the doll's face and trying to recreate everything as precise as possible. And of course, in this situation, it's quite difficult to talk about some, I don't know, freedom of creation or something like this, because you always have this reference picture in front of your eyes, and you always try to follow, really, everything as close as possible. You're trying to recreate everything, and hair, hairstyle, face, outfit, everything. Yeah, and that's why today we're going to do something completely different to give me some short break. And today we're going to, yes, go for this freedom of creation completely. There is no reference pictures, there is no, I don't know, sketches that I've made, nothing. I just want to follow a couple of rules that I've established myself for today's makeover. First of all, I would love to repaint a doll that I don't use that often on my channel because you know I have a lot of dolls there in my stock upstairs and for example I'm almost out of Frankie dolls I'm almost out of Laguna dolls I'm almost out of Draculaura dolls but at the same time I have extremely a lot of Gigi Grant dolls for example I don't know why I never use them probably because of this texture on her body and when I'm choosing a doll for a new makeover, I always like think, oh, what to do with this texture? Should I try to remove it with some, I don't know, sanding tool, rotating tool with some Dremel? Or should I just let it like this? And then, and then it's always kind of a big doubt. And I end up just taking another doll. And I end up just taking Laguna or Draculaura or Frankie instead of this poor Gigi Grand doll. So I have now probably, I don't know, six or seven of them in stock, never used. The same problem I also have with Abby doll also have a lot of them in stock because i've used them just i don't know three or four times on my channel and that's why today for this so-called freestyle makeover i would love to use one of these dolls that i almost never use in my work when i'm following you know reference pictures so i've decided to take this gigi grand doll she is extremely cute i really love her and i think that she would fit the idea that I have already there somewhere on the background of my hat. So this was the rule number one, using a doll that I almost never use. Then the second rule is going to be using a hair color that I almost never use on my dolls. Because you know I mostly make real people here on my channel, like celebrities, historical characters and so far. And that's why I use a lot of natural hair colors like blonde hair dark hair ginger hair sometimes pink hair can be mint hair i used also sometimes very seldom i use also something like light purple lilac hair color but i absolutely never use for example blue hair like really true blue hair just once on my Coraline doll i used blue hair but it was again it wasn't my own project, it was a recreation of an existing character. Or for example some bright green hair, also never used on my channel. I have a huge stock of doll hair, really all shades, all colors, all textures, special effects, everything. And I'm using just blonde, ginger, black and, uh, and pink and that's it. 
So that's why today I've decided to finally use some hair colors that I've never ever ever used on my channel before. So and it means guys that we have a doll that I almost never use as a canvas, then we have a hair color that I almost never use on my dolls, and then there is also the third rule that I've decided to establish for myself. Yeah, I really would love to make this doll somehow summer related because I don't know about you guys but it's already August really August and to me it still feels like it's February or March something like this I had zero summer day so far because of this lockdown and because of I don't know, this situation in the world in general so I really would love to give this doll as much summer vibes as I can. So, putting all these three rules together, after brainstorming for a while, I've decided to make a butterfly doll. I think it will be really cool. I've never made butterfly dolls on my channel before. I also don't make that many dolls with wings on my channel, so it would be also very interesting to experiment today. And all in all, yeah, why not? Why not? I think butterfly doll is a very good idea for this, you know, summer in the lockdown doll repaint. So let's start. I'm going to undress this doll like always. I'm going to remove her accessories. And then we're going to cut her hair very, very, very short. Yeah, and then we're going to proceed with the makeover. So guys, while I'm working, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you are new here and hit the bell button if you want to get notified about my new uploads. I'm trying to upload new doll repaint videos every week Friday. Sometimes I have to skip a Friday when I'm going for a bigger project. But anyway, let's say we have here at least three doll repaint videos per month. So subscribe if you're new here and I'm going to start working. Of course, I will use my hair dryer to make the rubber head soft and to melt the glue inside of the head. And after doing this for two minutes, I will be able to disconnect the head from the body without any problems. And then I will be able to pull out the rest of the short hair that is still sitting inside of the head using my tweezers. And after this I can take pure acetone and I remove all the paint from her face and head. I want to give her this blue hair, I think this is such a pretty color and I've never really made a doll with long blue hair on my channel, just like I told you in the beginning Coraline had blue hair, but it was quite a different shade of blue, I will show you now, it was more something like this. 
So I'm quite excited about making a butterfly doll with long blue hair. I think it's gonna look very cool on her. But first of all, I'm going to cover the head with a couple of layers of blue acrylics. And then I take my rerouting tool and I fill in all these holes in her head with tiny strands of hair. So this is what we've got a couple of hours later, looks very good, very pretty, I still love the color. So now I will add tacky glue inside of the head and I will let it sit for sure for 24 hours to let it dry completely. Okay, the next day I can start working on her face and first of all I seal it with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. I want to work with her original skin tone today, so I will not cover it with acrylics. We will make all the changes with soft pastels. And first of all, I want to make this pink color a little bit lighter and colder. And that's why I first cover it with white pastels. And then I will add shadows with light lilac pastels. And don't forget a touch of blush, of course. I want to give her very bright and colorful makeup today, because this is also something I almost never do on my dolls on this channel. And you know, I think that this bright and colorful makeup would look better on closed eyes. And this is, by the way, another thing I've done probably just twice on my dolls. I don't remember exactly. Maybe I had three dolls with eyes closed. But I can remember making just two of them. So, and both of them were, by the way, quite a long time ago. So that's why today I'm pretty excited about making a dreaming butterfly doll with very bright makeup fitting her hair color and with her eyes closed. So first I'm using the blue pencil on her eyes and afterwards I'm going to make her eye makeup even brighter with blue soft pastels. And then the middle of the eyelids I make bright green. Yeah, okay, and after this I can add highlights to all the highlighted areas of the face, to the middle of the face, to the eyelids, to the eyebrow bones, to the lips and stuff like this. And now I'm taking this beautiful iridescent pearl paint with a green shift. You see, it's really pretty. It's like a unicorn skin paint. And I'm applying it to the doll's eyelids and also to her lips.
So this is how it looks now, pretty cool, I think. So now I can start working on her body because you can see that the color is pretty different right now. This is what we could do with soft pastels. But you know, before I start blushing the body with the same soft pastels, I have to make butterfly wings first, because I will have to make holes on her back for it, and you know, I better do it before applying paint. So, and I'm going to start with cutting a pair of wings out of paper. Okay, the size seems to be right. Now let's cut out them out of warbler thermoplastic. So here we have our wings. Now let's bend them and see where they should be placed on her back. And then I will make two holes on her back using a Dremel tool. And then I'm making two pins out of warbler to be able to fix the wings on the back. So here we go, here are the wings, let's see how it works. Yep, everything seems to be alright, everything looks good, so now let's paint the wings and first of all I'm going to cover them with blue acrylics. Then I spray them with Mr. Super Clear sealant to make the surface matte and after this I will apply a couple of layers of green and yellow pastels closer to the middle of the wings to create some sort of a gradient. Ah, and here is one of my fluffy assistants. Hello, missus, are you happy with the progress? And I go away, Smurf. Hey, go away, go away. Okay, let's zoom in. I don't know. Let's, let's zoom this cat away. Nope, it doesn't work. Okay, goodbye, Mrs. Cat. Okay, after we've removed the cat and could finish the gradient on the wings, I can take a black pencil and I draw sections. After this I make all the shadows deeper using black soft pastels. And now I want to add some highlights to these sections using my watercolor pencils. Thank you. 
and let's also add some very contrast details with white acrylics. And in the end, I want to cover the wings with our green pearl paint. So guys, and here are the finished wings. This is how they look. And I can tell you honestly, I really love the effect of this iridescent paint. It looks really pretty. So, and now, finally, after we have finished the wings, I can start working on her body. And first of all, I will sand it like always with nail buffers to remove this glossy top from the surface. Then I spray it with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant, you know it, of course. And then I blush it with the same pastels that we've just used to blush her face. So, the body and the face look really good to me. Now let's probably make a dress. And you know, today I want to create a flower dress for her. And I want it to look like she has made a dress out of a rose flower or something like this. And to make this rose flower dress, I will use this white foam paper. And to start, I will cut it into different size squares. Then I will take these squares and I will make three corners of them more round. And you see like this we will get a bunch of petals or like petal shaped foam paper. <laughs> And now let's take blue soft pastels and let's apply it to the outer edges of the petals from the both sides. And now, guys, this is the most time-consuming job. We're going to take them one after another, petal per petal, and then I will rub them and squeeze them and deform them, I don't know, roll them or stretch them, you know, really, deform in all possible ways to make them look like real petals and also to spread the pigment from of these pastels in a very natural way. And sometimes I can also use my hair straightener to warm up the foam and to make it even more flexible. Whew, done! I can tell you honestly, it took me some hours, probably more than two hours. Now let's wash my Smurf hands, if they're still washable. And then we will cover the petals with our iridescent green pearl paint. Oh, 
Okay, now we can finally start assembling the dress. I've placed here a ribbon where the top of the dress will be. And now I will attach the petals to the ribbon using hot glue, starting with the biggest ones, with the biggest petals. This is kind of a reversed flower because normally the smaller petals are supposed to be inside of a flower and then the big ones they are normally placed on the outside. But in our case the smaller petals would not be visible under a skirt of longer petals. That's why I've reversed the flower to turn the flower into a dress. Okay, this is how it looks, looks pretty good to me. And now let's make a couple of leaves to attach them to the top of the dress. And I'm going to make them out of a green foam paper using just an exactly the same method like we just used to make the petals. And now let's also attach the leaves to the dress. And I think I want to cover them with our iridescent paint as well, it would kind of bring everything together. Okay, the dress is almost finished, but I think I still want to add the very last detail and I want to decorate the top of the dress with this very pretty rhinestones. Like if she has decorated the flower herself with iridescent pearls to turn it into a real dress for a butterfly girl. So, and here is our finished dress. Now our butterfly girl still needs a pair of shoes and I think I will use this original Monster High shoes for her because I really like the color and I also love the bubbles here on the back. So, let's use them, but of course I'm going to customize them like always and first of all I'm going to remove the bubbles on the outside of this strap. I want it to be completely flat. And after this I will paint the shoes with our green iridescent paint. After this I'm taking these adorable dry flowers and I will attach the tiny heads of the flowers to the strap of the sandals. And these are actually real natural flowers, dried and dyed and they look so cute, really not normal, the most adorable flowers ever. Okay, now we still need to style her hair and I think I will go for a high ponytail with some very soft curls because I don't know, I think it would look good on her.
And this is where I've ended up with her hairstyle. And now I've suddenly decided that I would love to attach some flowers to the ribbon around her hair, here to the silver ribbon around the ponytail, to make it look like she has made I don't know, a flower scrunchy or something like this. So it's a very spontaneous idea, but let's make it. It's just very important to glue it just to the ribbon and not to her hair. So guys, and here is the finished hairstyle. I think it looks absolutely adorable, this flower scrunchy. And you know, I still want to add two tiny details to her look. First of all, I want to give her a pair of earrings and these are the same rhinestones we've attached to the dress, to the top of her dress lately. And then I still want to paint her nails with blue acrylics and then cover them on top with our green iridescent paint. Well, and after this, I think we can finally put everything together and then we will take a look at the end result pictures. So guys, here is my sleeping butterfly that I've made, as you can remember, without following any reference pictures whatsoever, out of a doll that I normally never use in my work, and using an unusual hair color. Well, unusual for myself, of course. So yes, I'm very happy, the initial mission is complete. And you know, in my eyes, she looks indeed quite different, not the same as the rest of my dolls. And this makes me very satisfied, yeah? I cannot deny it, guys. But of course, for me, it's much more important to make you happy, my beautiful people, my beautiful subscribers. So, tell me, please, if you are satisfied with the result of my work today. And I would also love to know what kind of makeovers you prefer most. When I make famous people and celebrities, or you like watching me creating dolls based on my own projects. I honestly don't know what I prefer myself. On one hand, I really love making famous people, you know, celebrities, but sometimes it can get boring and overwhelming at the same time if you make too many of them one after another like i told you in the beginning of this video and then i can really enjoy working on my own projects but it would be really interesting for me to hear your opinion so please tell me what you think in the comments under this video well, and this doll is now for sale, she's on eBay for three days like always, so if you feel like you need my sleeping butterfly in your life, you can find the link in the description box under this video. So guys, and that was my doll transformation of the week. I really hope you enjoyed it today. And if so, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel if you are new here, hit the bell button, and I will see you already very soon in my new doll repaint video. Love you guys. Bye.